Welcome to episode 61 of Lost Signals. My name is Daryl. I'm JD. How you doing, man? Not bad. The run out at the end of the theme song kind of went long there. Oh, I may have I'm to. not going to complain. No, <laughs> no, I may have to adjust that. But yeah, I, I also want to re-record that. You were talking about that uh, and including myself and Lee in it somehow. Somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, like I wrote that riff. Oh, God, probably a decade ago. Uh, I was in a band. Uh, Lee ended up joining that band. Lee is off on assignment today. By assignment, I mean Lee is at work today. <laughs> yeah. That's at a proper assignment. Yes. I'm supposed yes. to be at work, but I feel like hell. So, we'll sit. And I should be at work, but I took time off. Well, there you go. Needed. Yeah. Um, I was going someplace with this. Oh, yeah. No, the, the theme, theme music. See, that, that's how this episode's going to be today is like uh, my brain's not working 100%. So... Um, no, originally, yeah, I wrote that for, it was going to end up writing a song, like a full song with that, with, uh, my last band. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just got put on a shelf and didn't get used. We kind of, yeah, like that recording you hear there at the beginning of the episode, like, yeah, I, we wrote that and we just recorded it off the floor at, a, at our jam spot. So some people on there that are playing that I don't really want them playing there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that sounds like a, a fun project that we can get together on at some point in time in the future. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. I mean, it yeah. could cost a few bucks, but, you know, whatever. whatever. We'll make it work. So, so it's it's been a bit. And yeah. uh, I say this because uh, the last episode of Lost Signals was uh, you on location at uh, our wonderful sponsors, uh, Brewery House. Yeah. Yeah, so that was March 20th, so yeah, over a month ago now. Just, yeah, I'm trying to do an episode in the meantime here. We, you know, shit happens and get busy. Uh, yeah. But no, yeah, like I spent, oh shit, I think I was there like nine hours that day. Just, uh, you know, showed up early, you know, because like, like brewing a batch of beer, it's not like, it's not like baking bread or something. Like it's, there's a, there's a lot to do, but it's like short spurts of it. It's like, okay, you have to add all of this at one time and then you have to boil it. It's, it's, it's a whole process. Yeah. So yeah, I think I left there, I think six o'clock or something, you know, it was, it was a long day and you know, I had a beer or two, like it didn't have a whole bunch, but uh, no, thanks again for, to Tom for letting us, let me come hang out there. And then a couple buddies too were there. Uh, Yeah. Derek and uh, Kyle with uh i can't remember what kyle's company's name is but uh he's doing uh uh, he does like professional video shooting and editing and stuff and he shot a bunch of stuff too that uh it it looks really good so if you get a chance uh check out homebound's uh instagram page and check out some of the videos that are on there that uh that kyle did and they're they're really good yeah Uh, yeah and i was was there for that we talked a lot about you know (laughs) beer and music and uh musicians being you know elitists sometimes because we can be if that makes sense um yeah. but uh no it, it was a fun day uh and yeah hopefully you know like to to get out to see tom again this weekend maybe before i head out on my trip but we'll get to that in a little bit but uh yeah so uh normally when i shoot an episode you know that's you know, on a day off, I'm not really on a day off. I'm on a sick day, but uh, I'd be having a beer. But uh, today, not so much. Yeah, that's fair. There's there's a couple of things I want to bring up about that past episode of Lost Signals, episode 60. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, you, you took it upon yourself to uh, apologize to me in advance for referring to me as your editor, which you shouldn't have to apologize for that. But, but, like, yeah. I am proud to be called the editor right. of our show and uh, that i that is a badge i wear honorably right you know and and i i, I get it but it's like i just yeah. i didn't want to like not use you by name it's like oh i'm gonna send this to my <laughs> editor you know yes. like like as as like a, a an employee or something you're not an employee you're just a minion how about that a co-conspirator <laughs> yeah okay we'll, we'll go with that that sounds better than my uh than my uh explanation of yeah it. yeah but, but no, like, yeah, like by, by all means, like I've, 
I've been called other titles in shows I've been directly involved with, and this that's fine. Like yeah. I've been called a producer or an operator or an editor, and I, I wear all those hats, and that's yeah. totally fine. You've Secondly, also, like, you've also hmm? been called worse things by better people. <laughs> exactly, more derogatory, loving terms. Yes, I know exactly. Um, secondly, uh, about that episode, like, yeah, you know, like, going into the the sweet science of brewing beer, like, it is very much a hurry up and wait, but there, yeah. it's methodical because going through all the B roll and the conversations you two were having, and the process that he goes yeah. through, like, it is very much like. There's Hurry a, up and wait. There's a lot to it. I mean, like the the stuff yeah. that like like I've I'm homebrewed before, and you know, and when hopefully this summer I'm gonna get back into it. Uh, yeah. But like there there is a lot of like science and chemistry behind it. It's not just let's just throw a, a bunch of stuff into a vat and see what happens. <laughs> and it makes beer. <laughs> but but I, I I say that, but people do that too, though. Like it's but yeah. it, it's it's all dependent on on what your what your end game kind of is. Yeah. So, um, but no, like, like Tom walked me through a lot of stuff and like, and we're going to, I'm going to hopefully do another, uh, collaboration out there and actually, well, I, we kind of are already. It's yeah. not, it's not officially announced yet, but, uh, my band, uh, toxic. I had to think about that for a second cause I'm in two, but, uh, we are supposed to be playing a pig roast at homebound oh. at the end of, june i think june 22nd i could be wrong cool. could be wrong but uh hmm. i might get in trouble that day too because i think that's my nephew's grad party so i might be might have to go play a show and then go home and you hate it know. when you double book shit well, <laughs> yeah you know i mean family is more important but like my nephew would understand i would just go there early go yeah. play the show and then come home yeah. But uh, yeah, check that out. If I'll have a exact date and details up later, absolutely. If it actually happens. the third thing I want to bring up about that prior episode, episode sixty, where yes. I did edit for it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> when the fuck have we ever done commercials? You just you just out of nowhere like we'll cut to commercial, <laughs> and I'm sitting here editing the footage, going, "We'll cut to what?" <laughs> okay, may- now I gotta make up. Two commercials, <laughs> let alone one. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'd had a few beer by then. You know, and it's like, was, it, it, it was funny and it worked. So if, if you get a chance, you can you could put that exact same commercial in right here. <laughs> <laughs> the Lost Signals podcast is brought to you by Homebound Brewery, a family-owned and operated brewery focused on bringing people together and creating quality small batch craft beer that's all your own. Serving a variety of beers on tap and in cans, along with guest seltzers, cider, and even some non-alcoholic options for kids. Cans available at over 40 retail liquor stores throughout the province of Saskatchewan. From our family's hands to yours, it's Homebound Brewing. Check them out online at homeboundbrewing.ca. You know, so... So if you want to edit that into here, you know, you, 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 yeah, you, you go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just did. So fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I'm sitting here editing all this stuff and I'm like, it's good stuff. Like you know, a lot of stuff to go over in the B roll and the questions and your conversation is great. And it's like, he's like, I, I just got to go check something. And you look at the camera and go, and we'll go to commercial. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there going, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's made your work just a little bit harder. <laughs> I've had people say that to me before. Like when you're around, you have to think it just gets a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was actually like that that, that was a pleasure to do because yeah. Um, like yeah, we've never done a commercial, so I produced two commercials on the fly and well, there you go. Had fun with it. And I'm glad that we were able to do one for uh homebound. Yeah. Which was kind of fun. And yeah, I did I did show that specifically to Tom and he's, he has, I think he has said he's watched the full episode. He he did say he was a little apprehensive about watching it like the full episode because he's scared of watching himself on, on, on TV or, you know, on, on the internet, whatever. And I get that. I totally do. Um, But I I specifically showed him the commercials like, dude, that's fucking awesome. Like it is. It really is. You did it. You did a hell of a job there. So. It, yeah. And, you know, it was for, for what, uh, honestly, for like what was available to me. And like, it was, it was, 
it was pretty simple to do because like their website has a lot of information about what they are about. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. he made it easy for me to do that. Yeah, just pull right from that. Like if if the info is there, you might as well use it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So so that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and like again, that that whole day was fun. And again, thanks to Tom, you know, for for allowing me to sit there and bombard him with dumb dumb questions like all day like especially like yeah. the stuff that we weren't we didn't record or anything yeah there were some dumb questions asked but that's nothing wrong, that's nothing wrong. You, you don't know you, you just gotta ask right? well exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah I, I, of all the things i've ever done like all the behind the scenes and, and behind the studio and all that stuff never been to a brewery let alone a microbrewery uh, or on location brewery, like it, seeing what happens there was was interesting. It was oh it yeah was informative and it was just absolutely wild. And also like you guys going back and forth about like what type of brew specifically are you making right now? And like oh I might make this depending on what I add and blah blah. So it's, yeah. it's interesting how that all comes together. So fun story. Uh, last time I was there, uh, I I tried the beer that we made and it's pretty right. It's pretty fucking good. Like it's it's really good. Oh, it, cool. was, it was a yeah. He ended up making a pineapple sour out of it, and man, it's like a perfect summer beer. So he, cool. he said he hasn't had like he he hadn't put it in cans yet when I was there last week. So hopefully, hopefully when I'm there this weekend, I'm gonna stop in yeah. there maybe Friday and maybe get some cans. And because like, I I still have stuff I have to send to you now that it's warm enough, I could probably send you some beer up. Mm. you know it'll it'll have to be after i get back from my right. vacation and you get back from your vacation yes good call good call because uh you're going on a trip and i'm going on a fucking long overdue trip <laughs> yeah i'm finally going to mexico that's it's about damn time man like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you're you're gonna have such a good time i mean you're not gonna have the same time as i would have on it because mm. i'm getting you guys are all inclusive i'm guessing yes yeah yeah so like like we talked about this before we came on here and like you it it's let's be honest it's it's the end of April. Those places aren't going to be that busy anymore. I think that was the point. Yeah. Like so yeah. the resorts should be a little more dead, you know, like you know like you should have more space to yourself. It's and it's probably going to be fucking hot there. Like, I, I was looking at it. Actually, I can bring it up on my phone right now because I have it saved to my like my little phone weather network thing here. Yeah. Cabo San Lucas is currently sitting at 29 degrees fair with a uh, cloud. And it's going to be around that temperature for the foreseeable future. So I'm wearing sunscreen. Oh, and like clothing. Yeah. Um, lots of sunscreen, like more than you think. Like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be fucking liberal with this stuff. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. <kidding> me? <laughs> like I fucked up when I went for Tyler's wedding, the one yeah. day, because I was in and out of the ocean a bunch of times, and I didn't reapply enough, and then I ended up having sunstroke that night. So, ooh, yeah, no, I know what that's like, and that's not fun. It wasn't fun at all. <laughs> like everything hurt, just like my head hurt and my skin hurt. So it was not, yeah. not fun. But no, it's good that you're finally going, yeah, and you'll enjoy it. I mean. Eat lots of food. I like. I know you guys are gonna go do like gym stuff and whatever, but like that's. Oh yeah. So, um, for those unaware, like my my girlfriend Alicia, she's a bodybuilder, and actually for the past six weeks, uh, she's put me on a very specific uh routine and dietary uh plan, and uh, this is to essentially just get in shape to go to go to Mexico, and uh, it's been interesting because um. I haven't been losing weight, but I have been putting on more muscle, which is yeah. kind of wild. Yeah. But at the same time, like for the first time, it was um about two, three weeks ago, I, I was doing a set and I wasn't doing a personal best when it comes to pushing weight. But I finished that set and my head went <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, OK, that's that caloric deficit she was talking yeah. about. Yeah, it probably fucking screwed with your head quite a bit there. Yeah, nice. but I mean, it's it's been interesting. It's been a wild challenge, and she, again, she's the bodybuilder. I'm I'm just kind of new to this whole situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's it's been interesting. But uh, she's already like 
we're, we're, we're staying at this resort and there's, there's a steakhouse that's right over here. And, and Sammy Hagar's bar is just down, uh, down the street and oh, yeah. a hotel California and where they invented the tequila side rise is like a, a half an hour drive away. I'm like, yeah. fuck me. Okay. And let me get the keys. <laughs> yeah. So are you guys renting a vehicle or you just cab it down there? I would probably just cab it. Um, I, we haven't gotten that far yet. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm going, I'm going with her family and yeah. they've, they've done this trip a couple of, a couple of times already. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind driving. I, but then again, yeah. Like renting down there, like, especially like, cause if you only have it for the day, it's probably not worth it. You mm -hmm. know, plus, I mean, I seem to remember traffic down there being stupid. So, uh, I go rent scooters. Maybe that'd be fun. That would be kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. Just jump on a Vespa and off yeah, we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be good times. Yeah, but yeah. No, you, but, uh, you, you'll definitely have a good time. Yeah, the questions have been raised. Like, so what do you want to do? And and Alicia's uh, sister and mother and and Alicia's stepfather of all like, oh, this would be cool. This would be cool. This would be cool. This would be cool. And they look at me and go, "What do you want to do?" And I look at them and go, "Hmm, Mexico." Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a fucking clue, you know. So well, you should just tell him. Like, I just want to drink tequila at eight o'clock in the morning, like my friend Daryl would do. So <laughs> yeah, the I want my eggs, Benny. Yeah, tequila, coffee, <laughs> yeah. right there. The one more, like one of the first mornings when we were at Tyler's wedding, I walked down from the room. I was by myself because I knew there was people down at the having breakfast already. I walked yeah. by, like we were in the the private section. I walked by the bar and like, yeah. Well, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and I, I ordered, the, I think it was a double vodka soda and two shots yeah. of tequila. First thing, like, like Whoa. I had just brushed my teeth, but it was, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. this will get the tooth. Oh yeah. Flavor, okay? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. I want to, I, I want to tell a quick story. It's not my story, but it's a, it's a story of a close friend of mine. Her name is Jen. Yeah. I've known her for going on 20 years and, um, she didn't ex like she's in a happy place now, but she didn't exactly have the best luck when it came to dating guys. Yeah. Um, she uh, I'm telling the story because like she would make this annual trip down to Mexico and she just met this gentleman. I can't remember his name. It's not important. Um, but she's like, I, you know, we're going to go to Mexico. I'm like, OK, that's kind of quick. Um, but all right, off you go. Because again, she made this annual trip down to Mexico. So she yep. was taking this new guy with her. Um, so got down to Mexico and to make a long story short and Jen, if you're watching this, I I'm, I'm doing my best and correct me afterward if I do get anything wrong, but to make the long story short, the plan was, uh, fly from Prince George to Vancouver, Vancouver to Mexico, spend five days in Mexico fly back to Vancouver, spend two days in Vancouver, then fly back to Prince George. That was the plan. She, the, the two of them flew down to Mexico, uh, passed out due to jet lag, and then on day one, uh, hit the beach, had some fun, no big deal. Day two, uh, decided to check out one of the bars, and that's when he drank his face off. Nice. And turns out he was a belligerent drunk. Oh, fun. And didn't know his limit. She had to take him, uh, like carry, like hoist him, which apparently he was about twice her size, uh, up to the hotel room where he projectile vomited in the bathroom. Oh boy! <laughs> and then uh, she went to help him clean off in the shower, where apparently he proceeded to try to challenge her to a fight. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh either. But it, it, it is. I know of, the end. Yeah. I know the end story. So, yeah. um, he then proceeded to pass out in the bathtub, and according to her, all she did was just turn off the water and throw a towel on him. Hmm. Uh, he passed out in the bathtub. She slept in the bed with her keys and her passport and her phone and her wallet close to her chest. Woke up the next morning. He was still passed out in the bathtub. She went down to the beach to read a book and suntan and just kind of enjoy herself. He showed up middle of the afternoon, and the first thing out of his mouth was, Oh, good morning, puke face. He was the one who's projectile vomiting. That was day 
three. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, she did her own thing for day four and then day five. Unfortunately, they had to share a flight together. Uh, when she got back to Vancouver, she said, and I quote, I ran as fast as I could to the nearest rental car company and drove back home. <laughs> oh, man. Left him in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame her at all. Like, Good for her yeah. for getting out of that because that sounds like a not fun situation. You know, but she, when she came back, she's like, "JD, you gotta come over." <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the entire time, like the the couple times that I've gone on, you know, like those booze, like rage filled, not rage filled, but like booze filled, like trips. Yeah, I, like you know, Vegas and Mexico and Jamaica. Like I never puked once. I do because I I find I don't like I don't drink to get like absolutely annihilated i just sip mm -hmm. all day you know like you never get yeah. to that point where you're you know super sloppy and me, maybe tyler would, would say a different story about this but i don't think so but like mm -hmm. I, I try to not be like that because i i don't want to spend the whole next day hung the fuck over yeah hence the drinking at nine o'clock in the morning but that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could walk it off by then. Yeah, um, pretty much. Of all, of all the times in the very, you know, like, it's only just a handful of times. Uh, I, I'm the same way. Like, I'll have a drink to just enjoy a drink. Mm -hmm. but I never drink to the point of getting inebriated. But oh, I, I'm not different from that. Like, I, I'm, I'm drinking to get drunk. It just it takes more of the day to do it. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was my birthday, uh, 2016, and I know this date specifically for other reasons, but it was my birthday, 2016, where I got uh, intentionally hammered because I wasn't mixing the drinks. Uh, yeah. My girlfriend at the time uh, asked me, like, what's my favorite drink? And at the time, my favorite drink was a Caesar. Oh, yeah. Um, and so she specifically ordered, it was White Owl... Vodka? Uh, white Owl whiskey. 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 Okay, White yeah. Owl whiskey. That's right. Yeah. And she was making me drinks all night. And I, I don't know how much whiskey she was putting into this shit, but it was enough to get me off my ass drunk. Nice. And I threw up that night. <laughs> and this was, this was a Saturday. <laughs> it was a... The next morning was a Sunday. And... As you know, I've been working weekends for eight fucking years. I went to work, hung uh, the fuck over. <laughs> God, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I don't, yeah. I don't get drunk before I go to work, just because I hate it so much. I hate every part of it. I just hate my life doing it, so I don't do it anymore. Yeah, but that was that, honestly like of all the times I've, I can legitimately say I got drunk. That's the first time I threw up. Oh yeah, and it was it was it was projectile, but it was like okay, bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So let's. I don't, like, I don't know if I want to talk about this now, or do we talk about it later? What the where we got voted? Do we want to talk about that at the end? Oh please, yeah. No, yeah. this is this is a, like a feather in the cap, my friend. Yeah, I was well. I was wondering, like, maybe wait till the end. Yeah, fuck it. We'll talk about it now. No, do it now. So, a couple weeks ago, uh, random day. Little, I'm gonna look it up here. Actually, uh, got an email at uh, lostsignals.ca. Uh, info at lostsignals.ca. Uh, you can email us there with any questions, comments, whatever. And apparently, it's been getting used quite a bit lately um so i get an email and it all like it it almost seemed like a spam so like my email box for this it's a lot of spam it's like oh right. we can get your podcast at number one on the front page of google i'm like can you though can you <laughs> <laughs> do it and do i want that <laughs> you know like yeah i'm like okay now just get out of here so most of the time i don't even reply but so this one it kind of uh it kind of caught my eye and the 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 title of it was like lost signals featured in feedspot top 60 saskatchewan podcast i'm like right like okay what the fuck is this so i actually clicked on it and uh it's a legit it's a like it's a legit web page with this and they have lists for all like there's it's like 
there's a hundred thousand podcasts listed here. So like in, in Saskatchewan, we're in the top 60 and actually we're number 22 on there ahead of like yeah. the, uh, the rider nation podcast, which is, and, and you pointed it out to me too. You're, you're like, Hey, check this out. So I went and looked at it and like, absolutely. It's legit. Like, yeah. I can understand your concern. And yeah, it does come across as like, you know, just feed me your credit card number and we can help you out get yeah. taller. Yeah. But I looked into the website where Lost Signals is listed. And then I looked into adjacent websites, like one in Alberta, one in Vancouver, one yeah. in, one in uh, Manitoba. And there are um, not the same hosting site, but there are those sites that actually do take the analytics from podcasts and you know joint between spotify and youtube which is where we are hosted yeah on both channels and it takes those information that information and it just puts it all together what's the end game of the website i'm not sure but i like it is legitimate like you know we're yeah. we're actually making traction which is absolutely awesome for uh you know what we're just having fun doing yeah so thank you yeah, th thank you again. I mean, like for for the traffic and the people that have followed us over the last well, couple of years now. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, it, it, it's good. Like, and uh, I, I had a short conversation with uh, this gentleman here, and uh, said, "We yeah, we, like uh, we'll put a link to this uh, on uh, uh, wherever we have this uh, listed this time. Not this yeah. time, but every time. See, my brain's foggy today. Words are coming hard." Um, it's Wednesday, exactly. Uh, but no, we'll, we'll we'll have the link to this uh, the Saskatchewan podcast uh, list, and yeah, you can check it out there. It's it, it's kind of cool, you know. Like it's, I guess you know, like sometimes you, you do this, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's like, what's like, are, are we getting any feedback? And this this is legit feedback, you know, yeah, in, in a sense. So, so that was cool, you know, like in like small small things like that, you know, the, makes it you know a little. Not not easier to do the show, you know. Like, like it's a it's a it's a reason to do it. I mean, I like doing it anyways, but you know, it's yeah. So, but it, it, it's it's proof positive. It is yeah. It is it is feedback, and you know, negative feedback, positive feedback, criticism. It, it's something that you know us that are trying to build something uh, or host something. It's something that you know we we crave. Yeah. Um, and it, it gives us something to go off of. Like we can we can talk to ourselves, and we like I absolutely love sitting down and chatting with you when we have a chance. Mm -hmm. And that's just including Lee. Yeah. But like to have that outside opinion or that outside confirmation of like, hey, I caught this, and I blah blah blah, and you know, whatever it is that you may be thinking that you want to share, like it it goes a long way, and it helps reaffirm. The fact that yes, we're doing this for fun, but we're also reaching people, yeah. which is all we could ever want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, uh, we'll just keep going, I guess. You know, like it's, uh, I guess for I now. Guess. Like, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd still like to figure out a way to do this and not have to go to my real job, you know, in time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be I great. Mean, it, I'm not even there, so like we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's uh let's talk about WrestleMania here for a minute. You know, kind of shift gears. Did you uh, cry? <laughs> I didn't I didn't cry, but I was, was pretty excited. Yeah. Like uh I watched so I watched uh, WrestleMania night one at home, just chilled mm -hmm. out, and then I uh, watched with some buddies on uh Sunday and you, you can definitely tell there's a shift away from what Vince McMahon did. You know, like we talked about this after WrestleMania last year, like right. Re WrestleMania night one last year was fantastic, you know, like, and night two just sucked so bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, it like, did. <laughs> it was, it was terrible. Like the, the low spot of WrestleMania 40, like was leaps and bounds better than some of the best moments of WrestleMania 39 right, night two. Yeah. So Cody Rhodes finished the story. It was amazing. You know, Undertaker came out, beat the shit out of the rock. Not really, but kind of did like there was a lot of fan 
fair, you know, like they're yeah. like, like, and maybe call it, maybe call it pandering or call it whatever, but, uh, they did it right. You know, like they didn't leave the title on a cliffhanger, you know, you know, or, you know, like yeah. they, like they, they, they had the right person win for once. And in the for, sense for, for once in a long time. Yeah. Like, yeah. and don't get me wrong. Like the way that they used like the bloodline and shit as, as the super heels, you know, it's going to be hard to, to create a heel like that again of that yeah. level. Yeah. And I don't know if they will, but like that I've watched a bit of raw and SmackDown since, and like it almost like there is something missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's like, a vacuum. Yeah. 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 Call, yeah. A talent vacuum would be a good way to look at it. Cause like not having, you know, the rock there or Roman Reigns, you know, like, yeah, Cody Rhodes is, is doing what he can, but like not to have not somebody there and almost challenging him is like, what are you, what are they going to do here? You know? Yeah. So it's so, so I watched, I watched night one and night two and like deep down, I knew that if the rock Roman Reigns, if the bloodline won on night one, then Cody was going to win on night two. Yeah. It just, it just seemed like the, one of those like conquering the mountain type situations after you get knocked back mm -hmm. type scenarios. Right. And I will add the like the sidebar that the undertaker felt as though that he finally got some closure because the last time that he did anything significant was during the pandemic. Uh, and, well, his, his well, last match. What was, he stated. Yeah, yeah. Like the last match was his yeah. boneyard match. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was that was like a a closed set like yeah. stage production type match, which was like, it, he, it was he was it was he, awesome. He thought it was fun, but it was at the same time it wasn't what he was used to. Yeah. So it gave the Undertaker some closure, and like saying that, like. It was the right time, and it also did signify a lot of things. And they were fucking hitting it home, like driving it home mm -hmm. that this is the Paul Levesque era. This is yeah. professional wrestling. This is not Vince McMahon. This he is, is no longer at the helm. It's not sports entertainment. It is professional <laughs> yeah. wrestling. Yes. Exactly. And like even, although... I can't remember if it was broadcasted or not, but Stephanie McMahon came out on night two. Yeah. And it was kind of like, I'd never thought I'd say this because I always thought she was such a bitch, but <laughs> see, she, but she played was, that role. Well, you know, yeah, she played that role well, but she came out on night two and it was just, just like, Holy shit. Like this is kind of a breath of fresh air. Like yeah. the right McMahon is stepping up. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm glad Vince is gone. You know, like he had yeah. like the dumb ideas over the years, like be doing that for, you know, for the 50 years that he was there or 60 or however fucking long like that. It was, it, it was time, you know, like for him to go absolutely away. Time. Yeah. So with, but like, again, like, okay. So now Roman Reigns is taking a step back. And yeah. actually during a press conference, he did mention the fact that uh, his cancer is in remission, but he is like forever until he is no longer breathing. He will be fighting this thing uh -huh. and he will be taking medication. So he is due for some time off. And yeah. the bloodline is is making their own type of story with Solo and uh, what's his name? Tama Tonga. Yeah. Yeah. And and that like that's great because like they're they're taking the spotlight off of a main star and helping or giving the opportunity to uh some lesser stars. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with Cody Rhodes, where it's like, okay, so this is the calm before the storm. Like it just just like at the end of any sort of cinematic uh plot. Yeah. Where like things are peaceful, things are calm. There is a, uh, there is no big bad on the horizon. No correction. There is a vacuum which will be filled. Mm -hmm. You just don't know with what. Yeah. Or when. Or when. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
you know, it, it, it'll be interesting. Like, I, I, I won't spend as much time watching it again until, you know, January. You yeah. know, when WrestleMania season kicks off, you know, and that's, like, you know, like, I don't really watch a whole bunch of it during the summer. Like, SummerSlam, if there's some big matches, yeah. But, like, it's... I, I, I got my enjoyment out of WrestleMania 40. You know, I had a buddy that went, and he said it was, like, it was nuts. I know, like, I was expecting, like, when the lights went out, I expected to hear glass shattering instead of the Undertaker's gong. But apparently, yeah. it was a money thing. That's why it was. But Whatever. Undertaker yeah. was good. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, no complaints at all. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Speaking of wrestling and no complaints, uh, you and I have not had a chance to sit down and do this yet, but I bought... WWE 2K24. Right. And I can honestly say that this is the most complete wrestling game in a long ass time. Oh, really? Yeah. No, we did. Yeah. We did play it the one night, didn't we? We played 23. Oh. You and I, we, we tested 23 because I wanted to show you what uh, couch, co-op. Uh, couch co-op was. And so we have to, eventually you, me, and Lee will have to yeah. sit down and play 2K24. Specifically, the special guest referee match, <laughs> because yeah. they brought that back. Yeah, those but, are those are. But so here's good. the thing. But here's the thing with special guest referee. Now, in uh, when was the last time it was special guest referee? It was like SmackDown versus Raw, like that whole THQ series, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they added something to special guest referee. Oh. <laughs> if you are too biased. Eventually, you'll get kicked out as a referee, and an NPC referee oh, really? will take over. Yes. So, so what? <laughs> but if, only if you, only if you're too biased. Okay. So, like, what if you beat the shit out of both people? Then. I I, I don't know. I haven't tested you that yet. Try but it. Like you will you will get you will get penalized for a slow count. You will get penalized for a fast count. Oh yeah. You will get penalized for not recognizing a rope break. <laughs> like, but at, at the same time, you will get awarded and given leeway for a correct count oh, for okay. calling a correct call, right? So yeah. you have like, just like every wrestler has like a little health bar on the side. Yeah, yeah. A special guest referee has a approval bar up in the corner. Oh, okay. And uh, the better you do, like the more of a referee you are, the more it fills, which gives you that much more room to fuck around eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And then, and then this has happened before where if you, if you like completely drain that bar, you have about like a minute 30 before a replacement ref <laughs> takes over. So you still have a minute 30 to just go absolutely ape shit. So does the, the rep replacement ref come out and beat the shit out of you? It, it, it just kicks you out. <laughs> oh, cause it'd be, it'd be funnier just, if he came and beat the shit out of you, you know, just come and get, get out of here, you know? Exactly. So yeah. and, and so saying that the scenario has been brought to the attention of like you calling you calling a match straight down the middle and then once someone goes for the pin you go <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> and it counts. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, well we'll have so, to check that out. It'll have to be after my trip too. We didn't get to that. We yeah. we just kind of glossed over it. So uh on Wednesday, we're recording this on a Thursday. Uh Myself and my two oldest nephews are hopping in my truck and we're driving out to Oregon to oh, cool. uh, to go see my ne my niece. And my mom and dad are going and my both of my sisters, like the whole family's pretty much going out there. So, cool. yeah, we're going to be out there from... We're leaving the first, we'll get there the second, we'll be there till the fifth, and then we're driving up to Vancouver for four or five days after that. That's very cool. Yeah. Sounds like a fun trip. You, this is your second time in like a, a year and change where you've been to Oregon. Yeah. Like it's just, it'll be just under a year because I left on like the 10th last year and got back yeah. on the 15th. And yeah, we're leaving the first and then should be back around the 10th or so. But no, it, it should be good. Um, yeah. I, the only thing I'm really, and not even worried about, it's just like getting through Portland and Seattle. I don't like driving in Vancouver is it's not that it's whatever, but it's, I, I understand it better, but like I've never driven through Seattle before I've been to Seattle, but never mm -hmm. driven through. So mm -hmm. now nah, it'll mm -hmm. be fine. Um, yeah. We're driving through sure. on a Sunday too. Yeah. So it'll be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Just lots of church goers. Yeah. 
And the, well, I guess the, the only thing that, and it doesn't worry me either. It's like that the Canucks are in the playoffs right now. Yes. So Vancouver could be really busy. Could be. You're, you're going when? Uh, we're, I'll be in Vancouver on the fifth. Okay. So, but there's, there's it stands no- right now. The, the series between the Vancouver Canucks and the Nashville Predators is tied up at one apiece. Yeah. And so with that being said, let's take a look at teams, Vancouver. If they, they move forward. Yeah. Mm. It's, okay, they'll be playing in, I guess, let's see here. That's game one, game two, three, four, five. Game six is in Nashville on Thursday, May the 2nd. And game seven is in Vancouver on Saturday, May the 4th. Yeah. So you should be okay. Yeah. Um, unless, well, they, I'm guessing that they're going to, well, if they go into the second round, then it could be busy too, but whatever. It don't matter. I'm not that worried. Well, no, it. there's going to be a, a bumper between first round and second oh, yeah. round. Yeah. Well, we, we were kind of thinking maybe we could get tickets to like a playoff game, but I don't want to spend, you know, like $700 on a fucking ticket for a nosebleed seat. Not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of playoffs, uh, our WHL teams, respectively, the Saskatoon Blades and the uh, Prince George Cougars, it it's looking more and more like it could be a uh, one first place Eastern, first place Western, uh, yeah, showdown. Yeah, uh, I know what the I can't remember what the uh, uh, what uh, the the where the Blades are sitting. I know that. Oh yeah, they're. Let's see, what are you trying to figure? Oh out? yeah, no, we're. Uh, I I I didn't even realize that the second round is over already. But yeah, no, blades beat the shit out of the Red Deer. So. Oh no! Yeah, they're going into uh, play against Red Deer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Prince George is going to be going up against uh, Portland. Portland. In Oregon, so yeah. I would say if you're going to be busy because of hockey, it's because of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be. I, like, I don't know how big the WHL is in a city like Portland. You know, like, well, I can tell you right now because I've actually been uh, talking with a couple of, of radio stations in Portland, Oregon, and uh, the game three and game four, which is going to be hosting uh, the the playoff games in Portland, yeah, have been sold out. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's so, good. So it, it's popular enough that it is like it's selling out games. Yeah. So I just like, I wonder how big that, that stadium is there. How big is the stadium where, where you guys play? Uh, with standing room only, the capacity is just over 6,000 people. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, where the Blades play is like 14,000. Ooh. <laughs> I think <laughs> way bigger. <laughs> well, so like the like SAS Tel Center originally oh, SAS place okay. was built yeah. for uh originally an NHL team. Right. Which one? Uh we were supposed to get the uh St. Louis Blues. Oh, really? In, in the in the 80s, yeah, there was actually a whole thing like there was ads it's like we got the Blues or some shit. Like there was an ad campaign back in the day. Um well, you might get the Phoenix Coyotes. No, or sorry, no. the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> they're yeah, they're going to Utah. They're going to Salt Lake City. Really? Is yeah. that official? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it was uh, eighty eight or eighty nine. It opened. Yeah, eighty eight. It opened. Um, funny story actually. Uh, I just played there. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, my other band. Well, no, not my other band. My uh, band I play with uh, with Lee. We uh, we played at a uh, rush game, like a lacrosse game. Uh, a couple, oh, a couple wait, weeks yeah. ago. Last, yeah. yeah last we that. last we spoke, we were going to talk about that. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm just looking up right now that yeah the news broke like not even 48 hours ago that the Arizona Coyotes are done. Oh no that that broke like last week already. Oh shit! Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, and, and you work in the media. Jesus. Vancouver Connects. That's all yes. I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got asked to, uh, or we, like I had seen a, an ad on the Saskatchewan Rush page. They were looking for bands to play at, like in, in the lounge, like the original mm-hmm. 16 lounge there. So I'm like, put it out to the bands. I'm like, hey, let's, let's fucking, let's try and get this. So we did. And, uh, yeah, like it, it, it was fun. Like it, it was fun. I can act, I can say that I've played a, a concert or a show in the same place where a lot of like really famous people have played. You know, like not in the same yeah. capacity, like not on the field or anything. But you know, like, I can still say like it was, it was a, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. So, but now the the yeah. rush are out of playoffs, which kind of sucks. But that's uh, is what it is. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. The Utah hockey team. That's yeah. yeah that's fucking funny too. Yeah. The, the names that they've, uh, they've been coming up with are not, uh, not great. The first one I saw come up was blizzard. The Utah blizzard. Yeah. It could work hmm. Or the, the Salt Lake city Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would work. Or the, the, <laughs> The the Utah polygamists, polygamists. That's that's what I would go. With. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, unfortunately, they can't go with crackheads because there's already the Krakens. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crackheads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's talk about TV here for a little bit. Uh, sure. We were just talking about this uh, beforehand too. That uh, you just finished. Uh, uh, the Fallout uh, series on Amazon, and I also oh. just finished it. Um, the, the most difficult part of watching that entire series with my girlfriend, who has never played Fallout. Yeah. The most difficult part was not going, that's a video game reference. That's a video game <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, I I haven't played a lot of Fallout. Like, I tried giving, you know, 3 and New Vegas go and i played him a little bit no it's not really my thing but after Four. yeah after uh watching that I, I texted a buddy it's like there's two things it's like one i want a nuclear holocaust like right away because i think it'd be funny but not really <laughs> um and and i want to play follow force it's like maybe let's play follow four so i think after this i yeah. play it for <laughs> might play it for a bit so um, I, I actually checked, and um, Fallout 4 is available as a part of Xbox Game Pass. I have it installed so, already because there you go. go. There you go. Yeah, um, it's uh, the the show was great, you know, like, oh. and it uh, it does take place in the same universe as yes. the games. Yes, and it's supposed to be like seven years after Fallout 4, apparently. That's it. Kind it doesn't. Of- it, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Because, like time timeline wise, it I, I didn't I didn't see any sort of parallels. But at the same time, like the entire universe and premise uh, and story, overall arcing story of Fallout was just these people are stuck in these vaults, these absolute time capsules, and they they uh, make their way to the surface at sporadic times. So it could be seven years before Fallout 4, seven years after Fallout 4. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it, it's very apparent that this is the same universe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's... And they they're, they did it really well. You know, like... Oh, oh good. Like, the... The the acting alone, like, the, the like Lucy that came up from Vault 33, like, mm-hmm. how... How innocent she would have been brought up and then you know like when she got to surface like how and not saying that she got corrupted but how quick she turned to yeah. like to, uh, to defend herself i mean i'm trying not to give any spoilers here but like it's uh it's it's it was really well done yeah um did you do you catch the little uh nod to the what's going to happen in season two at the end um it's it's and it's not and it's not even a it's not even a spoiler because like if if you watched or if you played any of the de- uh uh follow games and you saw what I saw at the end you know what's what kind of beast is coming in season 2 okay so um I played Fallout 4 I did not play Fallout 3 or New Vegas 
or 76. And I watched, like I said, I, I watched the entire series. And in fact, I finished episode eight today, earlier yeah. today. Yeah. And I saw what was on the horizon, like the literal horizon. And I went, I'm missing something. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's two things. And okay, spoilers yeah. ahead. If you want to skip ahead here, because they're like, like I, give us five minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first, first thing is that, like he's walking up to New Vegas. Oh, that's what that is. That okay, was New Vegas. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, you could tell by the stratosphere. Well, it's, it's it's Vegas, and there was a skull on the ground that they walked past, and it was a death claw skull. Yeah, I saw the death claw so skull. That's that's yeah. kind of what I was like referencing is that it there should be like there was that groper animal to be yeah. like yeah, yeah, had yeah, the yeah. fingers in its mouth, which is super gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um that uh that was super creepy, but like it, it's no yeah. death claw, you know, like no. So no, it's not. And they made reference to like in that big board meeting, they made reference to super mutants. Um, and in fact, there was a hint of actual super mutant in an earlier episode. Yeah. And I saw that. Yeah. Um, and again, that was like the most difficult thing to not look at Alicia and go, that's a video. Game that's right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly it though. Like it's, it's, they, they did it really well. And like that, the fact that like Bethesda was like 100% right there, a part of it, yeah. making sure that the lore was done correctly is yeah. the way to do it right yeah. so. at, the, at the same time they like it was done correctly and they also added like just a, like the just enough humanity of yeah. of all these people out in the wasteland just bewildered at what's actually going on yeah right yeah no like, it was... like night titus <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> You shag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The actual night night tide is not Maximus. Yeah. 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 A apparently there was some controversy about that because John Rappaport was pretty vocal about his uh, support of old Trumpy there. So I know there's a lot of people saying that they weren't very happy that he was in the show, but whatever. I don't I don't give a shit about that anymore. I honestly I honestly didn't even <sighs> recognize it was him. So I did right away, but like yeah, but whatever. Who cares? He, he so so he was Knight Titus, and yeah. so if if he's if he's because Rappaport has has been a professional uh, shit disturber for quite some time. Yeah. Um, saying that if if he was Knight Titus and the way he went out, like it's, I don't know, I, I couldn't think of a better way for someone like that to die in a <laughs> TV series. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. No, the, the Fallout series was incredible, and there was there was plenty of moments where like it was the light bulb of like, oh shit, they tied yeah. that all together. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I went on online and I wanted to see if there was any videos that had updated, but like I watched like an hour. I've been sick, okay, so I'm just laying on the couch. But I watched an hour and a half long video about all of the fucking vaults in the Fallout universe. Hmm. Why? I don't, know. The, I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. but like, how, yeah. how screwed up it kind of is, actually, that whole universe. Yeah. But and they address that in the uh, the final episode as well. Yeah. And oh man, I, again, like I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but when uh, what's his face there, Coop turned around and went, "Okay, sure, Betty." I, like my eyes went wide, like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, that was the perfect like set him up, knock him down moment right there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't know why they released it in binge format. Um, why oh. it wasn't week uh, weekly episodic? I don't know. But holy see, shit! See, I don't know. Like, I, I prefer binge watching it mm. because then I like having to wait. Like, like. Like last season with Star Trek Picard, I was getting mm. mad. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I want more now. Yeah, it's like, just fucking finish the story. Just like Cody wrote, yeah. just finish the fucking story, you know, and be done with it. Let me, let me watch it on my own time. I don't want to sit and watch, you know, like 
watch it like once a week you know like how people used to i just i'm not i'm not into yeah, that yeah. anymore we, li- we live in now times exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh new deadpool trailer dropped what yesterday oh no yeah i the amount of the amount of t- okay actually before that did you, there was a bunch of people that were in fallout that were in deadpool there, well, one for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, blind. Well, in, blind Al. Blind Al. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure there's somebody else, too. But I, I recognize a lot of, like, some of those actors from other places, too. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Yeah. Did you catch, um, okay, so Lucy's, uh, Lucy's real name. Uh, uh, mm. Parnell. Her last name is Parnell. Yeah. Uh, did you catch that it was her father as the overseer in is, Vault Four? I don't think I don't think there's a relation there. No, there is. That his is, name is Parnell. Yeah, that's Chris Parnell. That, but like, is I don't. I'm gonna look it up now because she, <laughs> she's British, and he's like from the states. Is it Ella Parnell? I think it's Ella Parnell. Yes. Now, I, no, I, maybe it was it, just like brilliant casting. I'm not it's, sure. Yeah, it's, it's spelled different. Hers is Pernell oh. and his is Parnell. Yeah. Well, okay. Like, okay. So my mistake. Like, I honestly thought, oh. like, that's her father. <laughs> yeah, it's close, but yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, yeah. yeah no, the Deadpool trailer. Though, I'm surprised about how many times they said fuck in that trailer. Like, it, it must have been like 20, 30 times. Yeah. Like, which is really surprising because it's Disney now. Yeah. But I mean, I mean they did promise like Dis because Disney own it, owns it doesn't mean it's going to change. Yeah. Well, y- you can't, right? Like, and like the, the amount of references to cocaine was like, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like, just, like they they went on with that for like a minute, well maybe not a minute, but like it was pretty <laughs> fucking good. So, uh, I, I, you know, it's it's funny you you bring that up, and I I can actually uh, like I can draw a comparison as to uh, Hollywood learning a lesson, and that was like Deadpool has been uh, that way from the get go. Yeah. Deadpool one, Deadpool two, and now Deadpool and Wolverine. Whereas you look at something else that was at one point in time, very dark and uh, gritty. And then it went lighter and nonviolent and it started to flop and there was no coming back from that. And it was actually the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie yeah. series. Yeah. yeah. The first one was dark. It was gritty. They it had was kids violent. Smoke, kids smoking in that movie. Exactly. Yeah. And the second one, uh, the turtles weren't even allowed to use their own weapons. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's where it fell. Like I remember hearing about like the the original like graphic arts, their uh, graphic novels, like in the eighties, like what it should have been. Yeah, and like the turtles, like the Ninja Turtles, were way way darker and way more violent. Like yeah. compared to oh, yeah. the you know the fucking whitewashed fucking garbage that we got. Yeah, but. But still, like that, that, I think that that right there, it, it it's probably not a direct correlation, but that is evidence there of, you know, Hollywood potentially like, okay, so it worked, let's not change it because yeah. we tried that before, and it fucking failed. Yeah, but you know, like with somebody like Ryan Reynolds at, at not he's not at the helm, but he's definitely some sort of, well, he's got to be like an executive producer of it. There, oh, there has to absolutely. be. Like he has to have some say. Like, no, this is like that's not what he would do in this situation, right? Like, he's yeah. not, you know, or if he would, he'd make a joke about it and then shoot a puppy in the head or something, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, that's something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, or you know, like he kick an old lady in the shin really hard. I don't know. Like that's like <laughs> blind out. Like here you go, fuck, like, fuck, fuck yeah, you. yeah, yeah. No, it. I'm. I. It was good. I. I liked the trailer. I'm anxiously waiting for it to draw. I think that'll be, I'll go see that in the theater and that'll be the first movie I've seen in the theater since, uh, Spider-Man. 
No Way Home. Yep. Oh, I mean that's a decent amount of time. Yeah, Absolutely. it's there hasn't been anything really good that came out recently that I wanted to see. What was the last movie I saw in the theater? Can't even remember. Oh, Barbie, the Barbie <laughs> movie. <That's>, uh, <laughs> okay, that's not not really my my thing, but yeah. Yeah, I so, heard yeah, I heard it was good, but it it was entertaining. Yeah, uh, and it, it was it was way better than it should have been. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just give it that. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I sat down and watched Interstellar for the first time in, oh, I haven't seen like, two weeks ago. Yeah. W- wow, like that is an incredible movie, hmm. like a flat out incredible movie. And like, I yeah, should... it's it's a little it's a little long, but they have a lot of story to tell. And honestly, for a movie that is essentially about time, yeah. They they use time well within that movie. Hmm. Uh that's with uh Matthew but kinda gay, right? <laughs> yeah, but kinda gay. <laughs> yes, it's my, with him. <laughs> sorry, my head my head is still kind of fuzzy, so <laughs> that's fine. It is uh, that's the first I've heard that one. <laughs> and, it's, and it's it's not even that funny. I shouldn't even say stuff it's, like that. It was. It, it caught me off it, guard. It, it's funny. You got it, me. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. Interstellar. I would suggest you watch it. It is. It is a good movie. I will check that out. I might do that tonight. Yeah. Because I really have nothing else going on. So, hmm. um, let's let's start wrapping up here. You have a trip to go on tomorrow, and I have a couch that is calling my name to go lay on it because I'm tired. So I'm sick. That's fair. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. And the only re- like. It, Normally, I wouldn't have even done an episode when I'm sick, but we haven't done one for a while, and he's gone for a while, and I'm gone for a while, so it just made sense to do mm-hmm. it today. So mm-hmm. if any of my supervisors are work watching this, I am still definitely sick, and I'm going to lay <laughs> yeah. on my couch he after is, this. Yeah. He is retiring to the comfy couch after <laughs> yes. this. Yeah. Uh, what, are you, what are you listening to this week? Well, let's let people know what we're referring to. Oh, there right. is a playlist on Spotify called found signals and you can add it to your favorites or playlist or anything like that and what it is is a list that is forever growing of songs that we just add periodically per episode and even ask our guests or even you our listeners or viewers to add to it and you can do so by uh, emailing us your suggestions on our website, lostsignals.ca. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So check out Found Signals, a Lost Signals podcast. It is currently sitting at 11 hours and 50 minutes long. <laughs> yep. yep. With, uh, yeah, 173 songs on there. Mm-hmm. What's your, um, what's, what's your first one this week? First one is actually a song that, like, it, for whatever reason, a synapse fired. I was like, oh, remember this song? holy shit it's a political song it's a very specific political song it was a song uh from uh the youth of the time uh sending a message to the government that they are going to take notice as to the rules that were being implemented about voters rights and it's silver chair anthem for the mm. year 2000 that's such a good album frog yeah. oh yeah yeah that's uh that came out in, I think, like, 95, 96 through there. But, like, yeah. I like I remember, like, because they were all, like, kids my age. You're, like, yeah. six, 15, 16, 17 years old from Australia. And, like, that that whole album was just intense. Um, yeah. My first one is I'm going old on this one, man. Like, really old. Like, I've been listening to a lot of that Yacht Rock radio on Sirius yeah. XM, yeah, like the seventies and eighties, fucking crap rock. Not not even crap rock. It's like like Kenny Loggins and shit like that. I'm gonna put mm. uh, "How Long" by a band called Ace. Oh. When when you hear it, you'll you'll know exactly what it is. But it's okay. like it's it's so. Ah, uh, what's the right way to put it? It's it's very. Nineteen seventies, like very 1970s but it's it's awesome mm. it's a great track 
So I'm going to add that to... Oh, where is it? There it is. There it is. Okay. What's your second one? Do you want something else that's 1970s uh, or do you want... Sure, whatever. What? Do you want a good classic throwback oh, is... Sorry, uh, I'm going to cut you off. Mm -hmm. We were wrong with the album. For, uh, oh, Neon Balloon. Neon, neon, neon Ballroom, yep. Ballroom, sorry, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and sorry, what was your second one? Uh, inspired by your desire to either play Fallout 4 or have the big one uh, annihilate humanity, you dropped a bomb on me, the Gap Band. I know that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking that's a great song so i think that good. should be the title of this episode oh yeah 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 that's that's perfect uh actually i think they play that on that fucking yacht rock radio too every once in a while maybe not there you go yeah <laughs> oh man um i the song i was gonna add i fucking forgot that i added uh last time mm. uh it was uh last one it was a uh, neurogenesis by intervals the new intervals track uh but luckily there's another new intervals track that we that i can add it's called new tropic uh not n-e-w tropic it's like n-o-o -O tropic it's like remember like when joe rogan was advertising the alpha brain shit back in the day like that kind of new i think tropic. he still does oh yeah for sure he does i i took that for a while and it's like it didn't it, it didn't <laughs> of course it's not gonna do anything nothing it, it, it it makes your pee turn color. That's all it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah. But, uh, that's uh Did I did I add your Jesus Christ my brain's on. Yes, I did add both yours. Yeah. yeah. So follow us on Instagram. We're lost underscore signals underscore podcast on Instagram. Uh you can email us at info at lostsignals.ca. You can check out lostsignals.ca. You can get links to all of this stuff right there. That is your best bet. You can email us. You can get the link to the, like the proper link to the, uh, to the playlist. You can get the proper link to whatever uh, streaming service you use. Just go check it out. And uh, mm -hmm. if you, if you made it this far, you know, like, like, and follow the page on YouTube and on Spotify and on Facebook. And on Instagram, yeah. just do all of those yeah. things. We aren't one of those pages that spams you with shit 76 times a day. Because mainly I don't have the time or, yeah. care, or care that much to do it that much. On top of that, we're, we're also the same people who see that shit from other people and go, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, I, the only shit I post is, like, if we're doing a new episode, you're like, hey, yeah. here's the new episode. Check it out. Or, you know, yeah. if there's something that's pertaining to what we talk about. But, like, to put random memes up every day? No. Because <laughs> it's, it's annoying. It is. You know, like, we're just we're just here to just get some stuff out, you know? Just fucking just don't... Quit spamming people with your fucking Instagram links, too. Right? Yeah. You know? God, I hate... I just... The hey, couch is calling. Exactly. I'm starting to get grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been episode 61 of Lost Signals. And what do we call it? We're going to, you dropped a bomb on me. That's the title yeah. of this episode. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. My name's Daryl. I'm JD. We will see you guys out there after both of our trips, apparently. So. And, and well rested. Yeah. Well, probably not well rested. <laughs> yeah. and fucking hung over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. See you guys out there. Bye-bye. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. Big thank you to you for watching or for listening or for checking out my website, themediajack.ca. There is where you can find other episodes, other content that I create, as well, a link to the Patreon where you can support my show, all my work, directly. Also, where you could submit ideas, suggestions, or maybe you want to ask a future guest a question. 
Patreon is where you can go for all of that and so much more. And also get a shout out just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer for this month. Big thank you to you once again. And check out themediajack.ca. The merch is there. You can get a really comfortable shirt like this supporting the Media Jack or my partner, the Iron Bikini. Or maybe you just want to get yourself a good mug or a gym shirt or something else that tickles your fancy, themediajack.ca. Take care.